it's harder for symphony no regular symphony that. players to suddenly come across into the studios and, and sight read. Um, that's, why why that's, is that? Because they don't have to in the, in the way we do, and mm. we do. Um, and that we're reading stuff at speed and no time to rehearse. You know, it's 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 quite demanding, especially on the sight reading. I I often would have um, people come and play to me, some really terrific players, wanting to get into the studios. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, they they what they played was lovely, and I would then put up some cues that or keep cues for um, sight reading. And many just couldn't do it. And I would make them just keep going as if I, there was a click track going and keep going, keep going. And that stop and stumble. I said, no, you've got to keep going. <laughs> That's what you do in the studio is you've got to keep right. going. And did you put the click track on the, on them too, to see how they handle the click. Um, I, I, sometimes yes. If, if they're all way off, I give them some, you know, chances to play it again and try it again. And then sometimes you've got to get the music in there too. You've got to actually start, um, pull it about a bit and make it sound musical, but still, get to the end of the bar at the right time. I feel like the same thing when you're composing concert music too. Because like when I was, when I, when I used to do, when I did short little films, I, I was writing so quickly, like I could barely even keep, keep up with, keep up with the schedule, right? I mean, yeah, this is right. basically, yeah, yeah. but when you're writing concert music, it's the exact opposite problem. You're writing, you have the, all the time in the world, it feels like, uh, and then you're, you're, you are stopping yourself because yeah. you keep thinking, oh my God, that bar, Oh, it could be. It could be half a second. Yeah, longer. right. Oh, it could be. But in reality, nobody gives a damn. <laughs> you know. Or oh, can't can't tell the difference. <laughs> yeah. I, l I look at music written, you know, by anybody. When I see a student, and and the first bar is in seven eight, but it's a you know it's a long note, and the next bar is in four four, the next bar is in seven. And I said, do you think if you'd written it all in four four, anybody would be able to tell the difference that they would have missed that extra half beat that you took out, and they just look at me kind of like. Oh, I never thought of that, you know. I mean, it's, just, it's ri ridiculous what you do just because the music's in front of you. Mm -hmm. When you've got a movie, you don't do that. Right, because there's an, an engraving, all this kind yeah. of stuff that goes out the window. Well, there's also, you know, the, the great thing about it, and I think this is true of, of players too, is that you don't know what's going to come up. So you get your piece, you go through all your anxiety and all that kind of stuff, and you're in a recording session, which is six hours long. It starts at this and it ends there, and you have tens. And you, know, you have to get a certain amount of music done. Uh, and then the director says, I hate that. I hate that. I, that's not going to work. And so you look at it and you go, oh, okay. Well, what do you hate? Well, I don't like it. Oh, okay, I can fix this. So they say, okay, trom trombones uh, in bar 30 through 32, don't play that. Trumpets uh, lay out horns. Uh, let me give you some new notes. And so then you, you start, you know, you start rewriting it on the stand. Uh, one time we were doing a, um, we were doing a show with a director who was, you know, he was a lot of fun to work with. But and it was a short piece, it was like 20, 25 minutes, seconds. And he came out as we did it and he said, um, that's not what you said you were going to do. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, remember, there's a scene before this, it's a jazz thing at a jazz club and you're going to keep the jazz feel and blah, blah. And I said, oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember that. He said, so what are we going to do? I said, go away. I said, go away, give me 15 minutes. So, <laughs> wow. so, I looked at, so but I looked at my score and I thought, okay, I've got a bass player, he can play chords. I've got a trumpet player, he can improvise. I've got a guitar in here, I've got a keyboard player. I've got a sax player, oh, I can, okay. So I gave them chords and I said, the strings can keep their parts the way they are because we were gonna keep the harmonies. And I changed a few things and said, you take the solo here, you take the solo there, you do the drums here, you know what I mean? Give me this at bar six and all that kind of stuff. These guys can yeah, do it, but, but, you, but you can't do that with a symphony. No. But you also can't do it with we'll a composer who doesn't orchestrate. Well, that's true. That's and true. that it becomes way more difficult, yeah. obviously.